you see this and I put it Welcome guys, welcome back to my live. Thank you for stopping in. I am your diva chef, Simone Walker Barrett. So um, today's dinner is inspired by Italian American cooking. Um, it's gonna be very simple tonight. I'm going to be making a casserole that they refer to as zitti. So we're gonna talk about what is that. Zitti is a type of pasta. It's a tube pasta. But before we get into that, I just want to welcome everyone on Facebook and welcome you guys on Instagram. Don't forget to tell us where you're watching from so that we can give you a little shout out. All right. And remember now, guys, to share the live. Let somebody know that Chef Walker Barrett is on. And we're making dinner. So, as usual, we are going to start our dessert first. So, tonight's dessert is a tart. For those of you who have been watching for a while, you know I love to make tarts. And tonight's tart is sorrel. Yes, you know, it is a season. So, I went to the market on Thursday and I found these beautiful sorrel. Look at these. They are so beautiful aren't they they look a little bit different they're big and fabulous and i've been pondering what to do with it so um i decided to make a tart with it all right so these are referred to as sorrel florets a real day i love your bunch of nuts and this morning thank you so I call these sorrel florets because they look like a little flower. And so what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to go to my food processor and I'm going to chop them and then I'm going to cook them in this pot with some brown sugar, a little ginger and lots of rum. All right, I soon come back. You guys, you can just turn the camera. Jaya Speak says, hey. Hey. And then I'm going to chop. Cheryl Jenkins, hi. Hi, Cheryl. All right, guys. So our sorrel is all chopped up, and I'm using half a pound of um, sorrel, and this is fresh sorrel because my my tart pan is not very big, so I just tailored the ingredients to fit directly in my tart pan all right so this is what it looks like after i chop it now if you don't have a food processor you could have just chopped this very fine with your knife okay um i love the texture of it so i don't go too fine with the chopping so those on instagram this is what the chop sorry looks like and in this pot i have one cup of sugar Trust me. Oh, just in time to good night, all. Good night, and a tablespoon of grated ginger. That's what is in the pot. Sashi, your kitchen is beautifully decorated. Thank you, Sashi. But this is how it always is. <laughs> so what I'm doing here, guys, I'm just releasing the natural juices of the sorrel and sweetening up. The sorrel a little bit so you know sorrel is a little tart so anything that is tart meaning sour it likes sugar so I like to cook it first so this is going to cook for a good 10 minutes I'm just gonna turn this down to about a medium yeah and let it cook 
Now we're going to use our food processor to add some other ingredients. So let us talk about the other ingredients for our tart while we wait on the sorrel to cook. So here are our ingredients, our other ingredients for our tart. So in here I have one cup of evaporated milk and I'm using two eggs and half a cup of cassava flour. Now, I usually use almond flour in this recipe, but I only have cassava flour in my cupboard today, so I'm using cassava flour. And that is how my recipes come about. It's all about what I have, what I like to eat, what my family like to eat, what we see in the market. So cassava is going to get a moment. For you guys who have been watching, you would have seen me make a cassava brulee tart before. So this is very similar to that, but tonight we're using sorrel as the star. So in goes two eggs right in the food processor. Pretty, the ninth checking in from Brooklyn. Hi, pretty, thanks for stopping in. And I'm using, oh, I forget to tell you that I have sour cream. I love sour cream, so sour cream, evaporating milk goes in here. And finally, I'm going to add some butter. Ashelia, look in the fridge door and give me a stick of butter, please. So this is almost ready. All I want to do is just soften up the sorrel a little bit. gas finishing on me already go and get ready to change this gas because it's done all right i'm gonna give it to you just looking for my gas guys here you go so our gas run out just in time so this is what the sorry looks like after we soften it up you see how much liquid is in it that is what we want so i'm going to put it in here so everything goes into the food processor just like that first first v i hope i don't sound stupid but what's ziti oh ziti no that's a very good question ziti is a type of pasta it's a tube pasta now um you have penny and then you have ziti ziti is a little bit bigger than penny so if you know Penny, um, I'm just using that as a guide for you to know what ziti is. And so the pasta is called ziti and then the dish is also called ziti. So I just added two tablespoons of butter in here. I'm going to take this back to the food processor and mix everything together. Andrine Spence, hello. Hi Andrine. get me the tart shell please so guys I'm gonna set the oven to 350 for 30 minutes and this is our tart shell so for my tart shell the pastry I'm using is short crust pastry if you want to see how the short crust pastry is made, you could go over to our YouTube channel. It's called Next in Food. And you could 
watch the video on how to make gizardo and then you'll see how to make a short crust pastry i'm just cleaning the edges off all right now i have one final little ingredient to add just a little bit of rum you know rum just makes everything Crossed taste beef. better uh, you vote uncle and even if you at all at all i absolutely love my uncle so i'm gonna pour this into my container so you guys can see what it looks like this is what happened with sorry once you add cream to it um it changes the color pigment from red to um purple Cheryl Jenkins, how much salt? Just a pinch of salt, um, Cheryl. Just a pinch. I'm using salted butter, so I don't really need a lot. I'm going to give it a taste just to make sure. I think I need a little bit more salt. I'm going to add a little more salt in there. When you're baking, salt and sugar goes hand in hand together so don't be afraid to add a little bit of salt let me just get my salt In. so I'm gonna say Cheryl I add about half teaspoon of salt all right so this is what it looks like oh and I forget my acid I have to add a little acid to this Ashilio reach me a sour orange or lime please what the acid does when you're working with sorrel it helps to keep the color so I like to add a little bit of something sour in it a lot just so I'm gonna say a teaspoon of lime juice that should be enough take this and put it out the way mix this together and this is now ready for our pastry so for those who are just joining welcome guys let me know where you're watching from now, whenever you're baking a tart, you want to put it on a tray. So just in case it spills, it spill on the tray. All right, and this is gonna go into our oven at 350, and we're gonna let it bake for 30 minutes. Let's be careful. So dessert is done and now we are going to be making another dish and this dish is our potato garlic bread now I made the bread dough off camera because you know bread takes a little while to um to rise so this is the bread dough, all right? So this has been fermenting for a good 30 minutes or so. And by fermenting, I mean it rise and doubling size. This is what it looks like. I use all purpose flour to make this one tonight. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit more all purpose flour, give it a knead. And I want to divide these into four, four equal parts. 
all right and then shape it into a ball so i'm just doing this by feel so this dough was made with three cups of all-purpose flour two tablespoons of instant yeast three quarter cups of water two tablespoons of olive oil one teaspoon of salt what else did i put in there and two tablespoons of sugar that's all there is into this dough all right so i'm just gonna shape them and i have my pan ready you always want to have your stuff ready so this is my pan right here for easy cleanup i cover it with foil and this is what i'm going to do you just clean my rag tanya nicola bailey hello over there what's cooking today hey sis we're making bread right now we have our dessert in the oven a cassava well a sorrel tart with some cassava flour in there and that is being baked over a pastry shell all right so this is what we're going to do now this is the filling for our bread i have some cream cheese mozzarella cheese mashed sweet potato and parmesan cheese so i'm just going to combine everything so i had one regular size sweet potato i boil it and i mash it and then i added in half cup of cream cheese half cup of sour cream not sour cream half cup of cream cheese half cup of mozzarella cheese and half a cup of parmesan cheese that is what i added all right, so this is going to be the filling for bread. I'm going to roll my bread out. Just make sure that you guys are following. So you want to flow the surface. And I want to just roll this into a nice oval kind of shape. See that? Doesn't that look like an oval? Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is bring the ends in just like this. Tell the color baby. Okay, sounds great. Bring the ends in, bring them in, bring them in. All right, and we want to let them meet at the bottom. So you want to do that twice on both ends. Just like that. So I kind of want it to look like a little boat. So that's my aim. See that? Kind of like a little canoe. Yeah. And then I'm going to put our cheese and potato filling inside. probably should have do this on the tray because I'm wondering now how am I going to take this up let me see uh oh I gotta get my lifter to take it up so here goes lifter goes into the flower I should have done this on the tray. Anyhow, here we go. It's a little bit bigger than my tray, but that's all right. All right, so I'm doing one more. Roll it into an oval shape. I didn't really intend for them to be this big, you know, I thought the tray would have hold all of them so Stacy Asim I want to be a guest every Sunday hey Stace thanks for stopping in so we're rolling it 
like a little canoe roll the ends in roll them all the way in just like that and we do that twice and I'm gonna make sure to put it on put it on the tray from now before I fill it And then we put our cheese and potato in. I was hoping that all four would have hold on this thing, but no such luck. Probably can squeeze one more in. Make it a little bit smaller though. Try and get one more in there. I probably should have divided the dough in six and then they would have all fit. So again, we take the sides to the middle, just like this. Take the sides to the middle. So for those who are just joining, welcome again. Thanks for stopping in. Jacqueline Williams, hi there. Hi Jackie. Dream home by design. Me too, I want to be a regular taste in some of the guests. Thanks for stopping in Dream Home by Design. Again, guys, remember now, share the live. Let me know where you're watching from. Go in, could you go get the mozzarella cheese for me, please? It's in the fridge door. So we're gonna top this with a little bit of garlic oil and some more cheese. It's in the other fridge. So I'm going to freeze this leftover dough. Those are great for freezing. Once you freeze them, it retard fermentation. And by the way, fermentation is a process where the yeast acts on the sugar in the dough and it turns it into carbon dioxide gas. And that is what causes it to rise. And so the, um, making yeast bread is a long process but the end result is absolutely amazing so where is my garlic oil oh. so this is what we're going to do i have some garlic mixed with olive oil and herbs in this bottle so this is rosemary fresh garlic and olive oil Usually, I make these things ahead of time and I have them in my fridge. So this is the last of it. So that means I need to make more. Jacqueline Williams, put the camera on here to close the fan. You're hearing that fan, Jackie. And we're putting some cheese on. And Jean Spence, watching from New York. Thanks for watching on Dream. And we want to say hello to So now guys, we're going to leave this here to just hang out. We want the dough to go through a little process that we refer to as proofing. So proofing is really the continuation of fermentation. You're making sure that the yeast that you put in the dough is still very much active. So this part is called proofing. So everything that is made with yeast must be proof before you bake it. Join this leftover dough in the freezer.
All right, and we're gonna clean up now and then we're gonna start making our ziti casserole. Just clean this up. Take these things out the way. Our sorry tart is cooking nicely. You like to center. I don't want it to put out my fire. All right, so I'm bringing out the Dutch pot. So for, <clears throat> you guys have to probably pull the camera up so they can see the, what I'm doing in the pot. So we're going to talk about our ingredients for our ziti casserole. First of all, I didn't get any ziti at the um, store. So I'm using large elbows. It's still a tube pasta, but just to note, a ziti is a type of pasta, it's a tube pasta. It is long and narrow, it looks like penny. It's just a penny is usually cut on the diagonal while ziti is cut straight across. And ziti don't usually have grooves. So, let me just organize my station. So in our pot, we're going to add some oil first of all, but let's look at the aromatics that we'll be using. Can you guys see? So I have one medium red onion. If you have white onion, that is fine. Half of a red bell pepper because you know how expensive it is now. So you just have to use half. All right, guys. Half of a green bell pepper, a tablespoon of grated ginger, a tablespoon of grated garlic, and I have like three or four stalks of scallions chopped. I also have some tomato paste. This is a small can of tomato paste. And in this container, I have ground beef and sausage. I have a tablespoon of jerk seasoning. And this green thing that you're seeing is just a little scallion on top. Good assets. Good night. Can you tell me what brand toaster you have, please? My toaster, BR. Oh, it's not a toaster, my dear. It's actually an oven. What is the brand? It's an Hamilton Beach. So in this pot, I'm adding three tablespoons of olive oil. Now, whenever I'm cooking from a culture, I like to respect it. So even though I will add my little Jamaican twist, I like to respect the food culture because that is very important. So I try to use um, as much of the same ingredients that they would have in their country. So we have olive oil in. And then to that, I am going to add our ground beef. And you want to hear that sizzle? With a friend, hi chef, just joining on with what's on the live today. Hi, Miss French. So we're making a uh, ZT is really a casserole, and you're just in time because we are sauteing the beef. We're also making a cassava um, sorrel tart. Well, it's really sorrel because um, whenever you're making a dish, um, you name the dish based on the ingredients that is that is the most in the dish. So our tart tonight is a sorrel tart. And our secondary binder in our sorrel tart is cassava. We're also making bread, Miss French. We made up some bread and we stuffed it up with um, potato and cheese. It is now hanging out and proofed. So guys, so now that we gave our beef a head start, I am going to add all of these lovely aromatics so we're adding our red onion that was chopped scallion green and red bell pepper ginger and garlic now the italians would not have added ginger but of course i have to add my little jamaican to it so i'm adding some ginger in 
McPherson's catering says hello, good night. Hello, my dear. And of course, the ginger will not hurt you to one bit. So we're just building up our flavors. So now that that is in, we're going to add tomato paste. I'm going to start by adding half of the can, which is about half a cup. Now, tomato paste is really tomatoes that have been de seed peel and just really cook down until all the water from the tomatoes evaporate out so next time you see tomato paste especially when you're making meaty chunky sauces like these tomato paste is a great addition it gives it a nice red color and it gives it a nice depth of tomato flavor um, especially these times when tomatoes are ridiculously expensive so I'm adding friend. all of it. Little friends, thanks for the update. You're welcome, Miss French. Tomato paste is a little bit sweet in the back and it's tart at the same time. So what I like to do at this stage, I want to add a little bit of sugar and a little bit more Jamaican in it. So I added ginger as my Jamaican influence and I'm adding um what is this now sugar and pimento so that goes in a teaspoon of pimento and two teaspoons of sugar just went into the party and so now it's time to add the sausage now the sausage um is going to add it's a jerk sausage so it's going to add that spicy jerk vibe to it without you know without disrespecting the flavor now if i was doing this straight italian i would have added um, an italian sausage which would have had italian spices but this is a fusion so right here i have a tablespoon of jerk seasoning and that's going to go in with our sausage And this is going to just stay here and cook. So I'm going to let this cook for about five minutes. And then after which, I'm going to add some dry red wine to it. When I'm cooking with wine, I just like to add a wine that I like to drink. And this one is nice enough, so I'm going to add it. So we're going to clean up as usual, we want to clean as we go along. And I'm going to pause and check on my tart. for our dish tonight so I could not find the ZT but I found a two pasta and these are just large elbow and so I named the dish before the pasta arrived so I couldn't change it but um, without complication this dish is basically a, a one pot a casserole something that's gonna go into the oven to bake so this is the starch and these are our cheeses. This is ricotta cheese, mozzarella cheese, and Parmesan cheese. So now we're going to add some wine. I'm adding like a big one cup of wine. And what the wine does, as soon as you add it, it deglaze. To deglaze means, you know, when you're cooking and the food is kind of sticking at the bottom of the pot, once you add a liquid, what it does, it pulls that up. And so in culinary, we refer to that as deglazing. 
All right, we're just picking up the flavors from the bottom of the pot. I'm going to grab my tasting spoon and I'm going to taste this. Just to make sure we have enough flavor. I feel like I want some thyme in it. So I have this is some store bought tomato sauce. I'm adding this in. It has mushrooms in it. I love mushrooms. So that goes in. Adding a little bit of salt. I'm gonna turn this down and I'm gonna get some thyme and I'm gonna add some thyme and then we're going to combine all the ingredients of our dish and put it in the oven to bake. So feast on that until I come back. I'm just gonna pick the leaves from the thyme and just add add some in there if you can't hurt it with the thyme you know thyme give everything a vibe all right I don't like to put the branches in because they're woodsy so I like to pick the leaf off and put it in now as soon as the thyme is added, you just smell that beautiful thyme aroma. So this is a any night meal. You can make this for your family. Um, you could use ground chicken, you could use veggie mints, or you could use what I'm using. Um, and that's how cooking is, you know, you are inspired by somebody else's um, cooking tradition, but then you take it and you make it your own. You have to tailor the food to suit the taste of your family because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are going to eat it, right? So George, let's go ahead. George Matthews, season greetings, chef and family. Season greetings to you too, Chef George. All right. So at this time, our sauce is ready. This is what it looks like. All this want now is a nice piece of hard dough bread and some beer or some wine. But I'm going to add pasta to it. So I'm going to turn my fire off. And I'm going to add my tube pasta. And the type of pasta is large elbows. And so I really wanted ziti, but when I called the store, they said they had it. And by the time I get there, there was none. So I pick up the next best thing, which is good old elbow. Now, a tube pasta is great for this preparation because what happens is that the meat, the little pieces of meat and all the flavor goes inside of the tube. So, pastas are either um, referred, categorized as being tube or ribbon and tube pasta is any pasta that have a hole running through it and ribbon pastas are flat, just like a ribbon. So, all of this goes in. I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil. And I'm just mixing everything in my pot for easy cleanup. Jacoby's not here tonight to clean up, so you know the cleanup is on me. All right, isn't that beautiful? So this is good just like it is, but we have to be a little bit extra. So in the true Italian spirit, you must add the ricotta 
and I'm adding Parmesan cheese as well and mozzarella for a little bit of string. So I'm just combining all of my cheese before I add it in. All right. So the ricotta is a soft cheese while the Parmesan is a firm cheese. And now we're gonna mix everything in. Just like that. And then we're gonna put it in the oven and bake it just for a few minutes so that the cheese melts and do its thing. All right, go in, could you just reach that large dish? Never mind, I'll get it. I'll get it. Chef, Chef Kyle, season greeting to my wonderful Libra chef from my family's years. Happy holiday. Thank you, Kyle. Season greetings to you, my dear. Kale Saint says, what's that? This is our pasta dinner. It is called a casserole. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm just going to fill my dish up with this. And you want to make sure you put this in an oven-proof dish, a dish that can <clears throat> go into the oven and stand up to the heat. So you want to fill this all the way up and I'm going to put more cheese on top. Put this off to the side. You see that's the beauty about pasta. A little goes a long way when you're making pasta. So this is going to go into the oven just after I add cheese and I just hear the oven go off for our tart. So let's take a look at our tart. Let me just take it to you. So our tart has been baking for 30 minutes and look at that. Isn't it absolutely royal? All right, so now I'm going to put our bread to bake because they're now proof. Um, how do we know that they're proof is when the bread, the dough itself doubles in size. So it get bigger than when we first put it on. So this is what it looks like. This is gonna go into the oven for 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And we're gonna see what it looks like. And this one is being baked at 375. So I'm just going to leave the tart here for you to look at while we put some more cheese. Andrew and Spence, nice. Thank you. Let's put some more cheese and we're good. All right, my oven is tiny, so this can't go into the oven right yet. We have to wait until the bread comes out. So in the meantime, I'm going to make a little salad. Sherry Jenkins, the tart looks good. Thank you, Cheryl. Put it over there. I'm just trying to fix this right. You stay right there. That stays here. 
and we're going to make our salad right now. For my salad, I'm going to make the dressing first and then we talk about the ingredients. So in this container, I am for my salad dressing, I'm using months ago I made OTE to jam on the live. Who remember that? So what I'm doing guys, I'm cleaning out my fridge, using up everything. So I'm going to use my OT80 jam as the base for my salad dressing. I'm adding just a little bit of salt and then I'm going to add some vinegar. This is a flavored olive oil. What I do sometimes is just put all kind of spice. In this olive oil, I have a natto, pimento, cinnamon, all kind of things in there. So I'm adding just some of that for flavor. Then I am adding This is a red apple vinegar. I'm adding some red apple vinegar. Already there, says tart looks lovely. Nutsy Thank Treat. You. Says the peanut man is in the house. Welcome Nutsy Street. And I'm adding just a little bit more regular olive oil. And we're gonna mix this together. Then we're going to add, taste it and see what else it needs. Now whatever this part tastes like is what the entire dressing is going to taste like. All right, it needs a little salt. Doesn't need any sugar because the base is sweet. It needs some acid. Can't make a dressing without acid. So I'm adding in the rest of my lime juice just because I don't want to throw it away. Then I'm gonna add some white vinegar in. of the way dressing and so this is a vinaigrette so vinaigrette is from the word vinegar and it's usually oil and flavoring you can have an emulsifier so in this case my emulsifier is my primary flavor which is my OTET apple jam so that is going to hold the dressing together so that's going to be the primary flavor of this salad dressing and then just to thin it out and to add some more acidity, I am adding a little bit of plain vinegar. I also added a little red apple vinegar, which is a sweet vinegar. And now I'm adding regular white vinegar. I'm adding two tablespoons because I'm not making a lot of dressing. See what happens as soon as the white vinegar goes in starts to change the color now when you're making salad dressing it's better to taste the salad dressing with a piece of the salad because at the end of the day this is what you're going to eat it with right mm -hmm. so we're good to go all right Let's look at our salad ingredients. So, I have some red onions that's gonna go in. Some white cabbage goes in, and some iceberg lettuce. Patricia Brown, good evening, family. 
Hey, my sis. Iceberg lettuce goes in. And then I'm going to add some carrots. I'm just going to use my veg peeler and just make some slivers of carrot. Now you're eating all that fat in the pasta. You need a nice salad to just balance out everything. So I'm just using a vegetable peeler and we're slicing some slivers of carrots in no particular order. Then we're gonna do the same thing with our cucumber. We're gonna make some slivers of cucumber. And I like to cut it around the seeds. Nobody likes the seed in this also. So we just do it around the seed. All right. And we have a salad. So this is a little trick. Well, for the holidays, you want you don't want to be in the kitchen for long. What you do, you make the salad dressing into the bowl. Then you put the salad on top of the dressing. And then you can just cover it and put it into the freezer until your family come over for dinner. All right, do not mix it. So again, you make the salad into the, into the, the dressing into the container. You can do a store-bought dressing. You just put it at the bottom. Um, the idea is that when you're ready to serve, you just toss it. And then finally, I'm adding some nuts. These are walnuts. You can add any nut that you like. These, I toast them. And these have some salt and pepper on them. So to toast the nut, you just put it into a dry pan on the fire. Or you put it in the oven. And you just season it however you want to season it. And this is our salad. I am just going to put pop it in the fridge until the oven, until the um, bread is finished baking. So put that in the fridge. Brian, peanut and water is that China bump or a nigga stick in your hair? <laughs> Brian, leave my hairstyle alone. It is. It is whatever you want to call it. It is my hairdo and I'm wearing it. Just putting back the stuff, guys, while we wait on our bread. Tanya Nicola, baby, ba Bailey, maybe I should just come and spend my Christmas holidays with you, all, sis. I need to gain a few pounds. Maybe you should. All right, so our bread is in. We're just going to clean up and we're going to unmold our beautiful tart. Take it off the pan, put it on the board. Isn't this in the middle like here keep it to you can you guys see all right guys so i'm gonna make a little icing for our tart what you show Patricia Brown, sis, that's our bro of your trouble. Huh? Patricia Brown, sis, that's our brother of your trouble. <laughs> I mean, no. Messing with my hairstyle, right, Pat? Huh? Camille says GD and Chef. What was that? Trillian says GD and Chef. Tommy right. Nicola Bailey, only Brian. Hello, hello. Only Brian, indeed, our brother. Okay, guys, so 
I want to make a little icing for our tart since I have some time. So I have some milk and I have powdered sugar. Let me just take this off me. I'm going to add about a cup of powdered sugar into my container. And to that, I'm going to add some good stuff, like the rum. Wash my hands. Check on our bread. Okay, our bread is baking nicely. Okay guys, so for our tart, we're just gonna give it a little, since it's holiday, just gonna give it a little dress up. So I'm adding a tablespoon of rum directly to my icing sugar, and I'm adding two teaspoons of whole milk, and I'm gonna just mix it. All right, I think we need a little bit more milk, so I'm gonna add one more. Continue mixing. This is gonna go very well with our tart because our tart is not sweet, so this little extra sugar is going to go a long way. All right. So this is our icing. We call this in the bake shop water icing. This icing is what we use a lot on pastries like cinnamon buns and donuts and so on. Okay, so now it's time for us to unmold our tart. Let's cool down a little bit to touch. I love buying this tart shell because it can just pull apart like that. Put it on our board. See, everything is nicely baked. Nice and firm, that's when you know that it is done. And then we take a little bit of our icing and with steady hands, you just put it on in no particular order. You do it however you like. cut it so you guys can see what it looks like it's the last thing we're going to do before we get off the live so again i want to thank you guys for stopping in staying in watching um we're not done yet so we're waiting on our bread we have our salad to serve I might just go ahead and serve my salad. Go ahead and reach that container, that black one. Let's go ahead and serve our salad. And the bread is going to be ready. So we're serving our salad. So let's pretend now it's dinner time and now we're serving our salad so now is the time you dress it right so you just toss it in the dressing just like that see 
give it a taste. Mm. Put it in your solid container. You want to make sure that some of the pretty colors land on top. And a salad that is dressed must be devoured soon after because the acid in the dressing will, will cause it to wilt. But just to show you guys what the finished salad looks like. Isn't that pretty? And the nuts in there gives it a nice textural vibe. Louise Herman Jackson Walker. Hello, my family. I'm late. Good night. How are you and family? Hi, mommy. We're fine. You're late, but welcome. So, just to recap, tonight dinner is inspired by italian american cooking and we made and of course everything that i make i have to put my jamaican culinary heritage in it so for our dessert we made a sorrel tart and the tart shell is made of short crust pastry remember you can go on and look on our youtube channel next in food to see how the short crust pastry is done also we made a salad tonight and the dressing we use our ote to apple jam that we made months ago as the primary flavor for our salad dressing which is really a vinaigrette so we use our jam so you if you can't find ote to apple jam which you may not find at this time of year. You can use your favorite jam because jams are made of fruits, right? So use your favorite jam, olive oil, vinegar, lemon juice or lime juice, salt, and you whisk that together and you have a very simple dressing very quickly. So this is what this is. And um, we made a casserole that we're waiting to put into the oven. And that was made of um, brown meat and sausage cooked in tomato sauce. And then we mix in our elbow pastas and lots of cheese. So I'm gonna give our bread a little peek. This is the bread. Ready, pasta goes in. Can you put a bit in the middle, please? What happened to that light? Into brain. So our bread is out. I hope you guys can see. All right, so we're just gonna let it cool down. So this is gooey, gooey, cheesy potato. This is going to be absolutely delicious. This is something that you just pull apart and take your piece along with your pasta. I wanna cut into the tart for you guys to see what it looks like. so that they can see me cutting into the tart. Lift the camera up so that they can see it. They're seeing me cutting into the tart. This is what it looks like, guys. Wait for it. Isn't that beautiful? Can you see? 
you see the texture so this is all sorrel with a little cassava now if you can't find cassava flour almond flour is a great substitute um i don't recommend wheat flour because i find that that's a gluten-free product it's 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 way better in a tart um, if you use white flour that will work but the texture will be a little bit different um, besides that the cassava flour brings a nicer the vibe or the almond flour brings a nicer the vibe this is a very simple dessert that you can make this holiday and also you could if you don't want to make the pastry you could use your favorite biscuit as the base I did a dessert like that some weeks ago so for example let's say you like digestive biscuits you can crush that up real fine then you add melted butter to it and you mold it into your pan put it in the oven to bake for 10 minutes and then you make your your um <clears throat> I'm sorry your sorrel tart filling and put over it and you will have a lovely dessert now eggs and butter is what is holding everything together in this tart this tart is absolutely patricia brown looks delicious so i'm just going to taste it for you guys if you love sorry if you love sorrel, you will love this. And even though the cassava flour is in there, you don't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it knows its place. It doesn't overpower it because cassava flour has a nice little acidity to it. So it works very well with that same acidity of the sorrel this all you need now is a nice big scoop of rum and raisin ice cream and this is absolutely amazing it's sweet it's tart it's crunchy from the shell it's absolutely delicious here go in try a piece tony nicola bailey give my, a piece to ashilia my ears are blocked by the sight of the food Your I'm, ears? <laughs> I'm in i'm in for the end product please i don't think I can't ever cook like that. Looks yummy as usual, sis. Thank you. I want you guys to see the bread, but it's a little bit hot. But feast your eyes on the bread. The bread. Starch on starch. There's something about starch on starch that just tastes good. Who knew that potato and bread was going to taste so good? And what I love with this, this is sweet potato. You can use Irish potato, um, but I didn't have any Irish, so I use sweet potato. So you get all of that savoriness from the cheese and then that natural sweetness from the Irish potato. It is so good. And then finally, our wonderful salad that we made with our OTET apple jam that we used to make the dressing. This is... This is your holiday dinner right here. This is any day dinner. Um, I want to thank you so much for stopping in, for staying in. Right now, we're only waiting on our ZT casserole to come out of the oven. And as usual, we will take the pics and we will share it with you. So we are going to sign out. And we're going to enjoy this wonderful dinner while it is still hot so before i go for those of you who have not yet subscribed to our youtube channel it's called next in food go over there subscribe watch the videos don't just take down the recipes share hit that share button tell somebody about the channel comment down below we would love to hear from you i am your diva chef Simone Walker Barrett, thank you for stopping in and staying in. Go in, just give them a close up of the finished dinner. Ashilio, give them a close up of the dinner. It looks tasty, tasty and the same. Can you roll it in the say I was calling you? Sue says it looks delicious. Hi Sue, thank you. Uh -huh. So guys, we are going to post a video.
video of the pasta when it comes out for you to see. I might as well just start my washing. 